What is up, guys? Welcome back to another podcast, uh, or worst podcast in town. I'm here with Aiden and our guest for today, Carvey. Hello. Uh, Hi. Uh, for you guys that don't know, Carvey is a full-time Twitch streamer, streams Warzone, and I think does just chatting category too. Um, but do you want to introduce yourself anyway? Yep. Uh, my name's Carvey. I'm 21 years old. I'm from New Zealand. I grew up in <laughs> I grew up in Taipei, but I currently live in Wellington, and I do full-time streaming. And yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> right. So yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. How do you get into streaming? Yeah. How do we start? Uh, oh well, probably I started streaming like three years ago, and uh, this was at a time where I was living in Australia, and I was pretty. Um, just I felt real shit about life at the moment. I was doing hospitality. I was working a few too many hours that a normal person should be, and I just came home um, every day after work, and I would hide myself away in my room. Uh, I play Fortnite like twenty four seven, and then I just go to sleep, go back to work, and it was just all about that. I never had any friends. I didn't go out with anyone. I was kind of just like cruising through life and not really feeling like I was doing much also I was kind of missing a bit of social aspect in my life as well because obviously with hospitality and stuff you are very social you have to meet everyone you have to you know serve people for a living but there's a difference between um the whole like friendship and actual connection compared to the whole bartending communications and everything like that so a uh, friend suggested that I should start streaming to make some friends and then I did I started making friends straight away most of them are actually American UK based um, and then I just started growing slowly, eventually some money started raking in, and then the community just started growing heaps, and now I do it full time because, because I can. <laughs> that's so cool. How did yeah. you, um, what was like, has there been anything that's contributed heavily to, like, your growth on Twitch? Because I know for a fact it's actually not a very easy platform to crack. Oh, no. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, the discoverability platform that they've set out on Twitch is just absolutely shite, but, um... That, that's why we're lucky today where in our social medias we have a whole bunch of different platforms that we can we can grow on i'm sure you guys are aware as i well. like hold tiktok is the absolute just can blow people up overnight and so it's really important if you're doing streaming and stuff to um post on other platforms because the discoverability on twitch is absolutely just this is just not good so i always post it on uh youtube instagram um post on tiktok recently as well and it just you just see such a change and it just makes the community grow so much faster compared to if you were just on twitch that's awesome what led to um your red bull sponsorship then because that was one thing I noticed. oh <laughs> yeah. so that took me that took me years to to actually even get seen by them i was um I would constantly message them. I would message people that were involved and sponsored by them, always asking, how do you get sponsored by them? Because, oh, sorry, there's a train going past if you can hear that. But, um, no, you're right. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, it was super hard. It took a very long time and a lot of friends, a lot of connections to finally be seen by Red Bull. Um, long story short, I would just email them, apply every single like few weeks, always get denied, never even get responded to. Post on Instagram, post on e everywhere. I even started like a, a TikTok thing, which has been deleted now, but where I would post every day about a Red Bull and do, or do like a Red Bull challenge. Yeah, yeah. I was like, because I grew, I ever since I was fifteen, I first started doing like hospitality work and bar work. I would, I ever since I turned probably sixteen, I've been having three Red Bulls minimum a day. So it's quite a bad like addiction but that's the only sponsorship that i ever wanted was yeah. red bull was, no. yeah that was the main goal i was like fuck i don't care if i'm homeless as long as i'm sponsored by red bull it doesn't really matter but um i ended up getting it by a friend who uh lives in new zealand and his brother works um for red bull and he hit me up and he was like oh i did something for you i was like what'd you do he's like oh, I hit up my brother and he's going to check out your streams and um, see what you're all about because only recently, this year and a little bit of last year, they've started to get more into the esports um, realm. Obviously, they're very heavy on their sports industry and stuff like that, but they're just diving into esports. They hosted their first Valorant tournament, um, I think it was at the start of this year or mid, yeah, mid this year. And um, so they've got, I think they've got six Kiwi streamer sponsors. One of them is Brox, who's a huge guy. I'm sure a lot of people know him, but... Um, and then they, they reached out and then they decided to sponsor me. So the sponsorship um, pretty much for me just includes, I have to have that in the background of my streams, um, every stream. And then they send um, like a 24 pack of Red Bull a month. And then there's additional 
things every few months that are like they'll give us a free game to try out they'll um, send us up to Auckland um, so at the start of the year for the Valorant tournament um, they flew me up to Auckland for the weekend and I got to host like part host the tournament and um, so they just do stuff like that it's really cool it's so cool if yeah. you, I've, one thing I've noticed especially on TikTok um, heaps of people that have been following me do esports it's like esports are well I don't know much. It, Kyle knows a lot growing, about Twitch yeah, but like is it something do you think esports are going to be massive within the next few years? Do you think there's like a way oh, coming through it? If you just think about it, like, what was it? I think it was last year or maybe the year before that where Fortnite started absolutely just blowing up. They had tournaments of millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars of prize money. And like, I are people who didn't really understand esports. They were complaining. They're like, why are these kids getting paid millions of dollars to win of a game but like that just pr goes to show like esports is, is on its way up um you just think about the amount of tournaments that are coming out for every single game and like every single genre of game and it just they're constantly getting pumped out and ever since coronavirus people have like obviously in lockdown they've been stuck at home and stuff so they've been able to grind it out they understand oh my god esports is a really good way even just not with professional tournaments with like sub tournaments or with wages people wager each other for money now it's just it's just blowing up and it's it's going to be um like with the Fortnite World Cup I think they really took it off but also like you know Rocket League yeah. the one I play they went to the Olympics bro but oh. that's how big esports is getting yeah that was at the like as a, a small Olympic event because it's one of those things where it's like Rocket League because it's like football so many people can understand it like yeah, the yeah. base you're gonna kind of understand but yeah Fortnite was huge with prize money and things absolutely yeah it definitely think, made a mark I think yeah COVID definitely helped because like me Koya and stuff we entered a Warzone comp yeah, yeah. didn't win but we moved do you wanna but you entered yeah I tell that funny story do you wanna um talk about your experience with Carvey how I met Carvey yeah. how I know of Carvey <laughs> oh really <laughs> so, so I also stream Warzone but I have like nothing but I I so I play, I've played Warzone for basically since it came out sort of idea and it was just kind of all my mates, we were all stuck at home during COVID and it came out free and so on PC, you know, we all downloaded it, it was cross play, we all started jamming it and then last year when we kind of were getting into it, we are kind of all playing it, um, we had like a touch team and stuff and we played and we'd play on Friday nights every night, like every week we'd play, and especially on Friday nights, we'd have like eight of us in Discord, two squads, mm. sort of thing. And there was one night where basically uh you had <laughs> you had killed our squad in the game and i went to your stream because i obviously always do this i went to your stream and abused like a re i'm sorry abused you so much for killing because like you oh, i don't remember it fully but yeah i abused you heavily that's all right i'm used to it <laughs> yeah and then um aiden mentioned it to me he's like oh we can get this this person off this um you know, for an interview, do you know of her? And I was like, oh, yeah, unfortunately, I... <laughs> yeah, I abused her in a stream when she shat yeah. on me. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I talked to him and I was like, how are we going to do this podcast if you're just going to go, like, abusing people online? So I'm glad you <laughs> So we, we'll probably clickbait this, like, a public apology from Kyle. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, anyway, um, who's your, like, dream Twitch clan right now? Like, uh, well... A few years ago, oh, well, last year it was Dr. Disrespect. Obviously, he's moved platforms to YouTube now. Um, there was Courage, but he's moved platform from Twitch as well. Um, probably would have to be... Oh, it's a bit hard now because all of the guys that I have looked up to very heavily have moved to YouTube, but there is Nick Merckx. He's, like, one of the reasons why I started streaming. Obviously, he's just absolute... He's an absolute god. And, um... And he's just, he just got his shit together in terms of females in the industry. Um, I know other people won't want to hear this, but Amaranth is a, f is a hearty businesswoman. She, if you guys don't know who Amaranth is, she's just a, she's a, the biggest Twitch e-girl there is possibly. Like she just does hot tub streams constantly. She licks ear, like microphones for a living, you know, stuff like that. Just typical, you know, just yeah, e-girl yeah. stuff. But she is very smart. She's a great businesswoman and she has multiple platforms that she is earning absolutely like millions and millions of dollars on she's got a whole team behind her and she's really smart so i would love to to um one day like just sit down and just pick her brain out because she she's got a shit together yeah that's it's real interesting you bring that up because um obviously one of your other platforms that you use is only fans as well and i was wondering like what's the behind the scenes of that like do they take a big portion of your money and oh, like i think it's like 20 percent maybe oh, it's, so it's not that much no. it's not that much but if it, that was your only source of income, I feel like it would be quite 
um, painful to have that percentage yeah. taken away from you. But I literally just, I take it serious, but I also do it on the side and I just fucking, it's fun. Yeah. It's just something to do on the side. Yeah, but extra money as well. Yeah, because yeah. it's, like, it's, it's like, um, I've noticed a lot of people um, have tried doing it like over the last year. I think there was like a lot of praise around, it, especially in COVID people are like, oh, you can make, you can make an OnlyFans and make a lot of money. And like a lot of people haven't successfully done that. Mm. Um, but I think like, it's quite interesting you brought that up because obviously like marketing it and the, like, you've got to have a platform to like monetize it. So, yeah. and I know it really, really frustrates like some dudes that like, well, even these dudes with it, but like some dudes that like, oh, girls can make money on the internet, blah, blah, blah. But like, you have to be really fucking clever to do that in my opinion. Yeah, you do. It's, and literally with the whole social media, and I think this, this isn't just with Twitch and OnlyFans, this was with a whole bunch of things. If you're an influencer, if you, you know, content creation and stuff like this, it's so important to one, network and two, make sure you're posting on, on your different platforms. How how am I supposed to grow my OnlyFans if I leave it on the, there's, there's no discoverability. It's worse than Twitch. Like you have to post it on your, your other platforms and you have to post it regularly because people will forget about it. Yeah. 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 One of the, um, I noticed that I, and I think it probably, well, I mean, it happens to anyone trying to make anything like sort of content on TikTok, but, um, like, how do you deal with some of the hate and stuff that comes in and like hold yourself up? Especially because I feel like when you're obviously a girl playing games, especially if you're like kicking guys like this guy's ass, like it's obviously going to like stress them out. You know what I mean? And I feel like you accidentally get targeted in a way, if that makes sense. So like, how do you oh. deal with some of the shit online? Yeah, that, no, that, that's a good question. Like being a female in the industry, in the gaming industry itself, is already gonna be a shit show, no matter what. If even if you're caked up with with makeup in here, or if you're just a female and you've got tatas, it doesn't matter. Like you're gonna get hate thrown your way, regardless. But it's just how you how you deal with it. I've been through a bit of a dilemma this year, deciding on how I'm gonna deal with it because I like I'm very a very straight up person. But recently I've hired a business coach and he's he's told me you need to stop stop um, firing back at the haters, especially while I'm live as well, just because it's, it's bad for the future, blah, blah, blah. But um, I kind of have been dealing with it recently through just, just getting rid of them, just blocking them. And um, people will argue to say that that's not the best thing to do if you're trying to grow because obviously the more comments that you get, the more discoverability you get, analytics will pop up more because more people are interacting with the with the video itself. But at the end of the day, is it worth it if you're fucking feeling shit about yourself 24-7? Sorry for swearing, but yeah. No, it, no, like, right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what, why, because like, I felt absolutely shit about myself. 24 7 especially when i started popping off a little bit on tiktok and people were just like they were just crap on me the whole time and um and i but i left it there because i wanted to grow more and yeah i grew like this much more but it hurt my my feelings a lot more than than it should have so i just blocked everyone and um i feel a little bit better um another new zealand content creator um uncle tix um, yep. so he, he kind of like, he's like an older brother to me. He looks after me a little bit. Can you guys see those Discord notifications? No, no, no. Okay, sweet. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but I'll always message him for advice because obviously he's one of the biggest, the biggest boys at the moment in New Zealand. And, um, I said, like, oh, cause he deals with a shit ton of hate, yeah, a lot of yeah. hate. And so I always come to him and be like, oh, how, so how do you deal with it in terms of like, uh, what are you looking at f to get from haters? Are you looking to, to milk them? Are you looking to just block them? Are you looking to just ignore them? What, and he's just like, no, just block them all. So a few people have just uh, said to, to do that over kind of firing back. I do fire back while I'm live, but I kind of turn it more into a troll so that they stay on for longer. Yeah, the longer yeah. that these trolls stay on, the more views and Make viewership that I'll get. Yeah, and that means um, that... You find it up. People like you, your obviously you have text to speech like donations, all that stuff, right? And I see you. I've seen a lot of your TikToks where like people say something you know weird or whatever. But do you have a lot of people, or do you have people who will use that to actually like give you hate? If that makes sense? Nah. Um. No. Nah? Not not really. Like no one really texts to speech to give you hate. I mean, back in the Fortnite days, they would because they're literal seven year olds. But um, nowadays all the text to speech is just absolutely lovely, and and my community's got their shit together. So. I definitely feel like, yeah, being a girl trying to play games, like, well, depending on what you're playing, but a game like Call of Duty, any of those kind of first-person shooters, you're always going to be targeted in the fact of, you know, oh, she's only got, she only got views because she's a girl, this, that, mm. you know, whatever, whatever. 
Yeah, there was a little bit of a dilemma with the whole text to speech um, donation trend that was going on. I'm sure you you would know, especially as being a streamer as well. Like a lot of the females, especially in Australia and New Zealand, um, made that a, a really big trend because it's just so fucking easy. It's so easy to just sit there, get a donation, react to it, clip it, post it. That's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to do it. There's crazy trick shots on the You're game. You know? You're yeah, it's it's so easy it, and it's yeah. so i feel like it's something it's yeah so simple like a five minute job that yeah. you can put on tiktok and if it goes viral it does if it doesn't it doesn't whatever you yeah. know you've put no extra effort into it literally like you just yeah you sit there and react and it became a really big trend oh, yeah, and yeah. there's quite a big dilemma like with the other content creators are like why would you make this a trend that you're just sending hate towards um, streamers that are just want to sit and play games, they're going to get text to speech donations now of hate, blah, 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 of dirty jokes, you're sexualizing girls. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but in my head, I couldn't give a shit. Like, if someone came to me donating, saying a dirty, funny joke, but they donate $5, I will sit there and I will laugh and I will say, thank you for the donation. I will not be like, oh my God, you're sexualizing me. Oh my God, I hate this. Like, get banned. That's just, that's just, that's why I kept doing it. But yeah, yeah there, was, no. there was a huge fight going on online of being like, don't do this shit oh, and i'm like God, I don't care. Let's... yeah <laughs> it is what it is, I... and if how people impo... oh sorry oh sorry um how important like obviously there's a lot of people trying to stream in that these days but how important is it to like get your personality across like especially like even advice for like someone wanting to twitch stream like yeah you have, you have a very big personality as well that like, you do you do give off and um even in watching your videos like in the way you react like you do put on a show which i think is so important like from an outsider perspective yeah there's there's people always get stuck with this especially as they start to grow as well are they going to pg themselves and you know kind of tone it down uh not really show too much of themselves because they're too scared of what people are saying or what they're thinking about you um and i went through that at the start of this year and i was like like i don't know should i like stop swearing should i need do i need to be more prominent more proper be nicer to people stop abusing everyone in chat and everything like that but i was like at the end of the day they people can see through it if they're genuine and they want to get to know you they're gonna see through that you're putting on a show like a, a big show like a fake and and everything so it, it just depends on what you want to do are you trying to milk everyone for views and money or are you trying to be yourself and become a genuine streamer and you know grow with with your community because people will, will can tell the difference um for if you're trying to be fake or not so yeah i just try my best to be authentic i think it's one thing a lot of small streamers like struggle with i noticed like when i was watching things and um is they think like they have to be you know top top player at the game just to get the views mm -hmm. and i feel like it's just important to be you don't even have to be like necessarily good at the game because <laughs> for someone like aiden for example he's gonna watch you for the personality not for the game you know and a lot of people will watch you for that they won't watch you yeah. based on how good you are like obviously if you're like top top player people will watch that some people will but uh, yeah i think yeah. that's one thing a lot of people struggle with to realize is you don't have to be the best player at the game to then stream it or whatever 100 percent. yeah exactly people struggle with that especially the smaller streamers but think about all of the top streamers that are funny as fuck but they suck ass at the game they are absolutely terrible but people don't watch it because they're, they're terrible at the game. They watch it because they're fucking funny. Like, it's a, it's a difference. Like, but if you're good at the game and you're funny, you want top streamer. Nick Merckx, like, it's just bonus. Yeah. But you don't have to be good at the game just to stream it. What What do you reckon's next for, you know, Carvey, for brand, for the brand, for the Twitch? Anything like that? Um, well, fuck, I don't know, really. I'm just too busy trying to get out of this, this house in the studio that I'm in at the moment. Trying to, after I finish moving, um... I really want to I really want to go to Australia there's a few girls that I've been in touch with that want to start a content creation house there's a few in Australia none in New Zealand there's not enough streamers that take us seriously here but um in Australia a few girls are trying to set up a content creation house I just want I want to do it really bad because it's just gonna be good for for the job I mean you're in a house full of other content creators who are gonna lift you up and try and do the same thing instead of people who don't quite understand what's going on thing, yeah it's like yeah you're definitely in an environment where other people are in the same the same kind of yeah. mindset as you yeah you got ideas you can collab you can network so that's definitely on the table at the moment um otherwise just still doing twitch i really need to focus more on tiktok because tiktok is 
a, a pile of gold that you're sitting on. Yeah, you'll touch um, on popping up. Yeah, yeah <laughs> need, really need to knuckle down, sort out that, and just sort out a big routine, and get get my shit together early, because I'm sitting on a lot of a lot of potential growth and revenue, but be, I've been too lazy because I'm self-employed. It's hard being a self-employed young person who doesn't have much help, like in terms of like because you know how you're employed by someone usually like a, a work a job a normal job and no. people are always telling you what to do they're always giving you advice and stuff yeah. as a self-employed yeah. person you, you don't get none of that you, get yeah, none you, of that. you have to youtube boss. it yeah, yeah. literally no. so yeah just sorting it out really no nah, that's been that's actually been real super interesting i think i think it's been very insightful because i don't know much about twitch but i've actually i've really enjoyed um learning about it so thank you very much for your time calvi i really appreciate it that's Is all right anything you want to um shout out or anything you want to say before we shut this off uh nah just thanks for getting me on the podcast and um yeah i appreciate it